Hello everyone, so welcome to the first video lecture under your course Foundations of Special and Inclusive Education. So today we will be starting off with a video clip which I am sure would be very much helpful for us to realize where the first lesson is leading us to. And I want to remind everybody that uh, as you watch with me, uh, come look into uh, pictures beyond what you see and come take your ears beyond words and uh, get to absorb what is it that the, the video clip is really trying to point out. Okay, so I want you to be very detailed and I want you to just fill it and to put your heart to it as we watch all together. Okay, so the title as you can see is Don't Put People in... It's so easy to place people in boxes, drawing lines, creating sides. There's us, and there's them. Those we feel comfortable around, and those we don't. There are those of us with many chapters, and those just starting their own stories. There's the well-to-do, and those doing what they can. There are those we share something with, those we don't seem to share anything with. Welcome, and thank you for coming today, guys. Today I'm going to be conducting an experiment uh, where I'll ask you a series of questions. Now, these questions will be very personal questions, and for us to get a true result, I need you to be completely honest with how you respond. The first question I have is, who in here was the class clown? This is how we understand diversity but uh, as of the moment I am sure there are still uh, some losing ends that you might be processing in your mind after you have watched the clip but like I have said we shall process them through and through all right so very importantly um, we try to look into first 
circles, okay? In order for us to understand um, diversity, well, basically because uh, like any of us, we have our core, okay? The earth has it. Uh, of course, humans have it, all right? So, in this figure here, as you can see on screen, we have two circles. Uh, the inner circle has factors such as age, gender, uh, ethnic heritage, race, and then sexual orientations, and then physical abilities and characteristics. So basically, those that you see inside, okay, or here in the inner circle, are what makes you innate, okay? So it's, uh, how do you call this? It's unique of any of us, okay? And then um, the, the outer circle now has first language, education, religion, income, work experience, geographic location, and so with these, okay? You know, because of our exposure, because of the different uh, walks of life that we are coming from, we vary, okay? So we differ, okay, to how we are able to communicate, uh, to what our family status is whether we are in the middle class we are in the low income family or whatever okay and geographic location as well okay so these are our outer circles which uh, we acquire okay which we acquire as we grow in age or as we as we travel around or even as we develop as human beings okay but uh, the inner circles, of course, are given, okay? So they are innate of you, and they are actually what makes us, uh, how do you call this? The person we are, okay? The human beings that we are. And the other circles, remember, guys, uh, these can change through time, okay? And uh, it's, the, the change would also entail, like, it can be uh, forgotten, uh, through time it can be discarded over you can erase it as you as you how do you call this as you grow in age or you can actually acquire more as you grow in age so that's how it works in the outer circles okay in the outer circle rather all right so um if you try to look into these two dimensions alone all right the inner circle and the outer circle of course given the different factors you'll get to see that uh, no matter how you say uh, you belong to a family, uh, you belong to a rich class, uh, you belong to intellectual family, or any label that you want to box yourself with or to associate yourself with, we should always remember that uh, if you separate yourself, okay, from the others in your family, you're actually a different human being you are not similar to any of them, okay? Even if you, you have a twin brother or a twin sister, you have a DNA different with hers, okay? There will be resemblances, but definitely you are unique, you are different. And so with us to other cultures, we are Filipinas by label, of course. We share um, uh, a similar race, but we cannot say we are all similar in every aspect okay we are different okay we are unique okay so those are that uh, you see on the inner circle and the outer circle what exactly is diversity what is it that we are talking about so it is actually from a latin term divertere which means to turn away to separate or to oppose okay so the collins dictionary has it put this way uh, it is the state of being different or varied a variety or assortment a point of difference like i have been saying a while ago the inclusion of people of different races genders religions ethnic group all right or etc in a group the relation that holds between two entities when and only when they are not identical the property of being numerically distinct okay so in many ways uh, we can actually trace the line of diversity among us. Uh, like I have mentioned a while ago, even twins are actually diverse. Okay? They, they are just, um, they can be, how do you call this, identically similar, but uh, 
we should not forget the fact that uh, these two people have actually different DNAs running in them and that makes them different okay even in their outer circles when they grow up they would tend to grow up differently because uh, innately they have something inside of them that's unique okay so that's diversity according to the dictionary the latin dictionary and according to collins so in the unesco okay it's a unesco guide on ensuring inclusion and equity in education 2017 and it's according to them diversity is defined as people's differences okay which may relate to their race ethnicity gender sexual orientation language culture religion mental and physical ability class and immigration status okay so look at that uh we'll look at diversity in a very um macroscopic lens we just don't look at it in a microscopic uh, uh viewpoint because diversity comes in different phases okay we are diverse with our gender of course uh now uh, orientations usually would just be male female and now we have other uh, the, the third sexes all right but basically we have those two orientations language is also by by nature um how do you call this dynamic okay language can be fossilized language can die language can be born Okay, so that is the reason why uh, the macroscopic point is what we need as an eye if we look at diversity. Okay, we have dialects, idiolects, okay, and the sociolects. So these are things or thin lines that actually make us diverse. Okay, so there are many things that really make us different and indeed eventually making us unique to one another. Okay, so... The question here is, do you actually know that diversity is an issue that we need to face or conquer? Do you realize that? Well, for so many at times now, I am sure, especially with your age, um, it's not a new thing to you to experience uh, conflicts or even troubles, uh, bullying, for example and uh, any other issues arising from differences and um, we should not omit the bigger picture here because it's actually all thriving or rooting from diversity okay so look at this presently people recognize and consider the differences of each person as important that's presently okay we all live in a global village that brings about changing demographics both in workforce and education yeah look at that um isn't it that uh, the the word has actually become globally local already or even locally global you see because um because of globalization we bring people from other countries to our country and so from our country to their countries and these shifts actually make us uh, see and appreciate how diversity is actually moving at its power to our advantage or to the advantage of other na other nations and that that makes the demographics changing through and through okay that is the reason why presently of course we may have not fully recognized it yet but uh, at least at the moment we already have embraced and uh, oriented ourselves to accepting the fact that this really has to happen okay so as our communities become more diverse it is imperative that we make more effort to understand the different dimensions of diversity which is not just about accepting understanding and tolerating one's uniqueness or differences so look at that um of course we we don't have to forget the fact that uh, even when we embrace or recognize uh, the reality of uh, having diverse communities inside our society we we should always remember okay that the uh, differences will come flourishing out or will come showing up in the workplace or even in in schools 
or any place for that matter. And uh, we have to remember, okay, further that uh, this needs, uh, how do you call this, virtues, okay, virtues from among us, such as understanding, but it's not just, it's, it should be beyond understanding, okay? We have to be accepting, tolerating, all right? Uh, uniqueness or differences. But it tells here that it should not be just about that, okay? It should go beyond that, okay? From accepting, we have to really look into what we learn from it good and we live what we learn from it bad, possibly, okay? From understanding, we get to way, which is, uh, uh, how do you call this? Uh, advantages to us which is disadvantages okay and then from tolerating of course it's a no-no we should uh, always uh, try to consider okay um, how the uniqueness or the difference help us or does not help us in any way okay so here is another point to that the same question okay confronted with the need to live in one global village it is valuable that we consider and explore areas that could connect us and allow us to do collaborative works. Accepting and celebrating the uniqueness of each individual will allow for respecting different experiences and qualities of individuals that will open up more avenues to solve problems and innovate. So look at that. What does it do if we go beyond accepting, uh, tolerating, and understanding? Okay, we uh, we find ourselves in that uh, moment when we are able to express without being judged and to be respected for who we are. Okay, so that is how it is to be connected. Okay, in a global village with which has diverse. Uh, cultures or which has diversity in itself okay and in that way if uh, respect is being established then uh, all the more that people inside an organization would be able to do more to create and to become more innovative all right so what else is a point in there collaboration and communication are skills that are needed to develop and succeed okay look at that collaboration and communication it is therefore important that we understand our differences and master how these could be used all right to harness tolerance cooperation and unity that will lead to productivity okay so the challenges here are not um, ignored okay meaning to say once that you are able to already respect uh, the differences of people that come surfacing uh, as they work with you, you cannot avoid, okay? You cannot avoid uh, the differences to really um, cause, okay? Uh, sometimes a problem. However, if, uh, if these have been talked about earlier and is equalized with respect, then... Uh, you are able to collaborate better and to communicate with the rest in the group, okay? Meaning to say, um, if you are able to accept someone, you are able to openly tell, express, and even ask. And eventually, if you are able to establish a certain level of communication such as that, then you can actually do exchanges and that leads to collaboration. And then uh, later on, uh, once you have already really established uh, the, how do you call this, that optimum respect for the differences, then you are able to develop further virtues such as being tolerable and the tolerating, uh, cooperative, and then being unified, okay? And how, how does that count as an advantage to your workplace or to the organization you belong? Of course, that will translate to productivity. Okay, isn't that nice? Now, uh, we get back to the video clip. So, isn't it that uh, it showed up a while ago not to put people in a box or in boxes? 
But initially, they were actually in there, right? So they were group, uh, they were in their circles, okay? So they, they were in their respective circles. But eventually, uh, when there has been codes or labels being told by the the experimental, I mean, yeah, the, the one conducting the experiment, and the, when the people are already getting out of the box because of these uh, labels, they are actually being regrouped, okay? Until they were categorized, until they were labeled, all right? And it's a beautiful thing, you know, because uh, in diversity, we, we tend to look at ourselves before we even realize that, uh, before we even realized we are diverse, we already try to associate ourselves with a group and assume, okay, our uniqueness, okay, okay because we share commonality with the group. Okay, so we, we try to categorize ourselves as the good ones and then the bad ones, the addicts, uh, the holy ones, the, um, how do you call this, the drunkards, uh, the chill ones, and so on and so forth. So we, we get to put ourselves in those boxes and we think we are unique because of this group. But later on, uh, when the people in the video clip were already separating, okay, getting out of their uh, initial boxes and then being associated with new groups of people, then isn't it that it became more beautiful? Did you see how the transition was? Like uh, at the end, okay, when everybody was labeled and called out according to labels and codes, at the end of the video, everybody was actually like uh, uh how do you call this sharing already uh, their differences and celebrating it among themselves when they discovered that uh, even if they were initially in a group they can still be unique because of experiences such as those who had cancer uh because of those who have been bullied those who bullied those who had tattoos and uh, and everyone else in there okay and the reason why initially or as early as the video clip was played i told you already to listen beyond words and to look uh beyond the pictures or the images because if you might have seen we we just saw a part of their uh how do you call this a part of their outer circle in the two dimensions okay so, you know in their inner circle there must there must be okay other stories okay in groups they were unique definitely from the initial box even when they were already outside the boxes regrouped and uh, uh recategorized but as individual people they still have stories okay but what is beautiful at the end of it was that you have seen uh, how unity how communication was at work you know because they were beginning to share they were beginning to like uh, embrace each other and then welcome each other and there regardless of their differences they were able to establish a relationship that breaks the band of diversity all right so regardless of whether we have looked into their individual stories still we were able to see that indeed communication uh i mean collaboration and communication would work if only we are able to open up ourselves and to welcome diverse cultures and diverse people okay so yeah i think that's the end of the first uh, lesson in this course and uh, i'm expecting for more of your insights on your video lecture reflections thank you and goodbye everyone